Right, I've got a couple of clamps on it. Nothing's glued together yet. Put a couple of bigger packers on this end. And I've got a piece of MDF here. 9mm would do, but I didn't have a piece, so this is half inch. This is cut the same size as that top rail. And I'm going to mark out for the oval. Mark it out on here, cut this out carefully, then use this as a jig to run me right around. I'll end up cutting the majority of it out with jigsaw, but then, like I say, I can run me right around here to clean it up. On the drawing, I used what they call an ellipse. Let's see if I can find something. An ellipse, which is basically that. It's a circle on its, on its edge. So whenever I try to get the radius from this, it just tells me, you know, the full radius. So that's no good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bit of geometry, pins and string. On the drawing here, I've got 84mm there and 108 there from the edge of the circle to the edge of my rail. So 84 and 108. Right, first I need to make two centre lines. So 925, 12, 50, Two forty two, two forty two. This mark on the hundred and eight and eighty four. So we got hundred and eight there, and eighty four there. Compass made out of some tulip a while ago, put that in the center. We need that size there, and transfer that over to there. We know those two are the same then. And what we need to do sit that there on our 84 mil mark. And put two little marks there and there. Three pins, one in there, these ones are staying in so I put them in quite firmly. This one is coming out, so we don't want to put it in too tight. Got some string line string here, it's not very stretchy. Need enough to go around there, a bit to tie off. And the easiest way to tie it, put a loop in the end. Tie that off. Fish the end through your loop. Pull it tight. You can hold that then. So you can let go of that end if you hold that. Couple of knots in there. Nice, 
Now this pin can come out now. I'll pull it tight. Out there. Right, so I'll cut that out with jigsaw and use it as a template. And just before I forget, I don't know whether you can see it, but if you look at it at the right angle, it's a full circle. you can use this to cut out the shape in a roof in a pitched roof so you imagine imagine that's your roof or your pitch or whatever and you want to run a pipe up here that distance there because if you look down at that from that, that direction it's not a circle it's a shape like that so if you can work out from your pitch what that distance is there that is that full distance so if you know that distance and then the width will be the width of your pipe so you can work out that distance mark it out like this use your radiuses Whichever one it was, that one, that one, then that one. Cut out this shape, and then when it's on, when it's when it's like that, when it's on a slope, when it's on pitch, on the piss, you could be a bit of slider, slider pipe straight through it. So at an angle. That is like, that is like an oval like that. Anyway, cut that out. Now, as carefully as I could, I cut that out with jigsaw. Draw around it, cut out the waste out of this with jigsaw again. 10, 15 mil off the line. And then I'll run the router around here with the flux trim bit. I'll have to be careful. Cut the cuts that way. So going down here I'll be alright. I'll be going with the grain as such. But then around here I'll be cutting into the grain so I might almost sort of work backwards taking little chunks out. And I did this drawing here. So I'm going to put a little mark there, so I remember that those are there. I'm cutting through nearly 50mm, not 48mm, so I'm going to swap this bit for a chunky bit. A bit stiffer these, less chance that it'll wander as I'm going and cutting round. So I'll whip that one out. I'm going to use this, I've got a bearing on the top, just thick enough.
just want to show you what I'm trying to do on this. You see the grain's going like that, so the most of it, the most of the cut, I'm going along the grain and then just nibbling out that bit. If I came back here and bit into it, there's a chance that big pieces of this will break out, especially when I get down to the bottom. So I'm just going along, just nibbling my way along. And I'm hardly touching this end grain. It is a little bit open around here. But at least it ain't broken out. And that's nice and smooth. Just burn marks these. It's a bit rough, but it's not as bad as it looks. It'll sand off with that. Right, I've just transferred these centre lines. The centre lines that I used for the to make the oval. Just transferred them round onto there. I could just measure, you know, take the jig off and then just measure, find the centres. But it might not be centred to this if this is not exactly centre, so I'll check those when I take the jig off. Which is coming off now. I've got to think about how I'm going to get three bars in these bits. Little tenons on the end. Might be able to do that one with the domino, but on the angle here, don't know. thickness of these I haven't put on the drawing. I could put the computer on and find it but I think I made them 40, 44 mil. So I think I'm just going to use the off cut. I'm going to have a go at doing this with Domino. So I've cut these square to exactly the length that they need to be. I've got to shape them, but I'll leave them square. This one's exactly set the right size, same as that. So these ones, I'll be able to put Domino straight in. The Domino has a centre mark. So I'm going to work off this line that I've marked on, it's the centre. Pushing it in, it might want to do that, so don't know. I could cut a block that makes it square to that. Probably won't bother with that though. Same there. Hopefully just go centre. Because the fence of the machine will be like that. I'll have to set the depth to allow for that. But to get the machine in there, I need to take all this to bits now. So you can see how, see how the tenons worked out there. Uh, I've just put an 8mm domino in the end of a scrap piece. This is about 21mm, so I just had to tweak the depth setting just a little bit. But that's in the centre of there. I'm going to practice on this off cut. Put some straight lines square off there, just like on the rail. This is different curve, but I think it should be the same principle. 
it's whether I can hold this hold the domino machine straight and cut straight the curve goes the other way but it's the same thing almost so I need to set the depth and have a go It worked all right. I forgot to set the depth. <laughs> all right, just been working out the centre. That's my final cut. What I did was made one cut, flipped it around, did a second cut. So cutting from this edge, then cutting from that edge, and adjusting the fence up and down until I finally got it something like. It's near enough. And this is an off cut off. My biscuit joiner has a little knob on the side so you can unlock it and then wind it up but the domino doesn't. That would be good to have. Fine adjustment on depth. Anyway, I'll have another go. Uh, I made that one quite deep just to see if I could if I could push it in. This is one of my rails that I did at the same time as I did that test piece. Got a temporary domino. I think it, the, the, there'll be a little bit of play in the domino or I can make a little bit of play in the domino I think that'll work out alright I'm going to have another go on one of the more severe curves Yeah, that was alright. Very, very slight wobble, but it's okay. Now for the real thing. Well, that's a small floor, isn't it? I can only see one part of my line, so I've made a pencil mark at the side. I'm just going to work off the side of the fence, I think. Yeah, that'll do. Right. Full depth, because I've got. 25 maybe 30 mil there. That'll give me a 40 mil tenon. That worked right.
marvellous. How well, they look like they line up. Uh, I labelled all these A, B, C. So what I can do now. This is why I cut them to the exact length. What I can do is well, to cut these down. But now I can shape the end of that. Not taking any off this bit. I'm just shaping it without remo without removing too much length. Uh, my calipers broke the other day. So I'm just going to take a pencil to there for now. But I've got this set up. Clamp at that end. Bits of timber on either end. So the idea is I can slide this one in and out. Scribe the ends of these. Alright, because we're travelling in that direction, I need to keep the scribers that way, not twisted over. I'm going to buy some new ones of these. My compass has a wheelie thing in the middle that's easy to adjust. Never been happy with that. I can't, I can't get hold of that little knob. Story of my life. I remember this jig that I made for making the newel cap. I've got this on my lathe. Don't use it very often. I did make a table, but maybe it was just a fast table. I'll do. Got a clamp. Now this has got emery paper on it. I've got this another day. One day I'll make one with sandpaper on it. Bit of fettling with them. But they're not bad. I'll put a bit of a mould around this edge, glue it together as it is right now, give it a good sand around these edges up a little bit. I've got to make a round on the top. I've just put it back together just so that I can put the mould around the edge here. I left the spindles out because they might get in the way of the bearing. And when I took all these out I drew around them so I know how deep in my mould's going to go. But I also mark them with marker with these sharper. And I mark the ends of the ones that came off as well. So I don't want to get them mixed up when I come to glue it together. I've got to sand all this, but the sharpie should stay. And I'm going to use a little overload cutter, rounding over, whatever. Made a little template. I can't get it in but it just fits under that. I have to be careful again, the grain lifting around here. You can see on my rough bit, you see how the grain's lifted. Mm.
I'm um, just trying to decide what sort of pitch to put this brace. I don't want to go full distance, I don't think. And I'm going to notch it into this bottom rail. Could put it up here, but then to me that's too steep. I don't want to go into the corner because then you start messing with the tenons. So I'm going to go there. Don't really want the brace on that curve on that thin bit of wood. So I think I am going to go pretty much right across like that. Now I've cut this square both ends. I've sat this corner on there. I'm going to mark in about 30 mil. put a little pencil line so I know where I'm working to. B for bottom, B for bottom. You can't really see but I'm going to put a pencil line on this side where it meets this rail. From there, I'm going to join it up to that mark, that 30 mil mark. Do the same at the other end. I'm going to cut that off. Uh, that's the maximum that will go, but it's not enough. Laser. Use a block of wood. I'm going to clamp that there. I'm going to use a block of wood at this end. Slide that up. Looks very close. I'm going to try not to cut this piece. It's slightly out but I'll do the other end. This should be the same. You can see I'm just slightly out by that line. Same on both ends. That needs to come in, so I need to move that block in. 
Only a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. You still see me pencil line there, but same there. So what I'll do now is I'll draw along there and cut that piece out. sharp pencil so I'll cut that out now that one up there of course needs to be just the depth of this rail Now I've got here a flush trim cutter, got a bearing on the bottom, 25mm long, and it looks about 19mm. I'll put a straight edge on here, piece of board, and I'll be able to run that out. That'll give me a nice clean cut up there. And I'll just have to nibble out this bit. These will be going against the grain, but it don't matter if it breaks out of it, you'll never see that. It should be it should leave a clean cut on the top. Now for the second pass my bearing will run along that that I've already cut and that'll be easier to do.
Now I've just got to either square that corner up or round my brace off, one or the other. So I'll do the other one. The only difference with this one, I've just got to set my depth so that I only cut that deep. I couldn't show you that one because you'd have been in the way. Or I'd have been in the way. The same thing, two passes, and then I just set my depth. And I used a little block, one of the offcuts, until it was something like. So once I round off that corner. Right, I just rounded that end over and the other end there just with a little sander once that gets clamped clamp glued together that'll close up same there I think I'm going to put a put a domino through there and then I'll put a fixing through there I've got some big coach screws just putting one straight through there that'll pull that up Put a domino there that'll stop that piece moving around. Plenty of glue. Right. Hot again, look, sweaty. Eighty-five.